um, RO0027, Colonel Fred Mwesije, now retired. And uh, I have been a member of parliament, and I'm still a member of parliament until uh, May, when I close 10 years of representing the people of Nyabushozi. Um, I was born in 1950 in Nyabushozi, in the sub-county of Chinoni, in the parish of Katiaza. And uh, from that time, I went to a primary school in Kazo Primary School, which is in Nyabushozi. And uh, in 1977, I joined the liberation struggle. I joined President Museveni's from NASA. And uh, in 1979, we liberated Uganda from the brutal regime of Idamin. And uh, after that liberation of 79, the conflicts between the groups that liberated Uganda uh, became very, very apparent because the main groups who had Fronasa, which was led by UR Museveni, and uh, which I belong to, and there was uh, Chikosi Malum of uh, uh, UPC led by Obote and uh, Oito Jok, and there was a uh, um, Save Uganda movement. There were so many groups. And those groups, um, but the main ones were the Chikos Malum and Fronasa. So after liberation, these conflicts and challenges still faced Uganda, especially the challenge of tribalism. The several governments that changed from Yusuf Rure to Naisa to Mwanga tell you that there was a lot of unrest among those groups. So that time they sent several groups to various training places. There was a group that went to Munduri. Uh, my group went to Chuba, and uh, other groups went to Liberia, uh, Algeria, and uh, <clears throat> so many other countries. So our group went to Chuba in 1979, and we came back in 1980, ready to join the liberation struggle. There were elections. Um, these elections were rigged. The rigging story is a long one. There was a creation of uh, unrelated constituencies, what they call gerrymandering. Then there was uh, multiple boxes. Each party had its own box. Then for UPS had its own box. DP, UPM, and that time the, the groups that were organizing elections led by Paul Mwang rigged uh, in favor of UPC. But while we were doing campaigns, our current president, Museveni, he was telling the people of Uganda that we know UPC is organizing to rig elections. We know DP will win. UPC will rule or will take power. But UPM will go to the bush to fight. So if you rig the elections, we shall go and fight. He won them in advance. And as he actually predicted correctly, DP won. UPC took power and uh, UPM went the bush. So we went the bush with Prince 70. 
and I was among the 27, and I'm one of the lucky ones still alive. So I count myself um, blessed by God to be alive because many of our comrades died, but uh, I praise God that I'm alive with other comrades. In our Nyankore, we call ourselves Enchirahachi. And uh, it has a big meaning. And uh, I also find it's a great, I take a great pleasure. I really thank God to see that we are now going to celebrate 35 years of liberation, 35 years of peace, 35 years of real democracy, 35 years of stability, 35 years of transformation. Although there has been several conflicts, definitely many groups have tried to fight NRM, but we have defeated them. Now, as I said earlier on, after elections were rigged, we win the bush. A few of us who were in Kampala around uh, the current president, UL Museveni, I was among the few because most of our colleagues had been deployed to various parts of Uganda, okay? In various units of, UP, of, of the army at that time. But for us who were in Kampala, we stayed with him during campaigns and after campaigns, when the elections were rigged, then we immediately uh, joined him and uh, we went to the bush, which he had predicted, which he had told, which he had forewarned Ugandans that if you rig elections, we shall take up the arms and go to the bush. So, on the 6th of February, 1980, we attacked Kavamba Barracks. From Makindye Chikaire's house, on the 5th of February, we drove from Kampala to Masaka, Nyendo. We went to Sembavre, we went to Ntutsi, and we went to Kavamba and attacked Kavamba on the morning of 6th of February, 1980. That barracks had about 3,000 trainees and about uh, one uh, unit of Tanzanian forces and Ugandan forces guarding that unit. But we surprised them and they went into disarray and we managed to capture a few things, a few weapons, equip commercial equipment, some logistics and uh, we took off to the bush. From Kabamba, we went to, to Chenjojo, we crossed Chenjojo and uh, we attacked the police station there. We went to Kagadi, Kakumiro, and we went to Chiboga. It's a long journey, and I'm cutting it short, but that's the route that we took. And uh, we camped in Chiboga, in the hills of Chiboga, and uh, that was on the seventh morning. And we started the bush struggle. In those uh, now, the bush struggle starts. Of course, on the eighth, we were attacked by Tanzanian forces in Choga. And uh, but before that, our leader, Prince of Seven, now had put us in several sections. You know, in the army, we fight in sections. And one section was supposed to go to Hema Road and block Hema Road. And that's the section I belonged to. It was commanded by Reto Mugabe, Hannington Mugabe. And uh, another unit was supposed to close the Kampala Chiboga Road at Bukomero. That was, I think, headed by Mule Mwanga. 
who disappeared, whom we have never seen. And then they, I think the Mbende Road was supposed to be guided by uh, the current Minister of Security, General Eric Muine, and uh, another group was supposed to stay with the headquarters with our leader. So when the Tanzanian troops attacked, but earlier we had attacked Chiwaga police station and captured a few weapons without any resistance. So um, the headquarter group was attacked and then it fled to some areas of Komero, Dr. Sebriba's farm. And uh, our section was in the in Bukwiri area after closing the Hoima Road. So after several days of uh, miscommunication, I mean, uh, this, we had disconnected ourselves. We had lost communication. Because this group that went to Sebuliba's farm was not in touch with our group, was in touch with the Tumine's group. So, but eventually we reorganized ourselves and uh, managed to, through civilians who were working as our guides, they were taking message that the enemy group is here, your group is here. So we managed to travel and reconnected and rejoined and regrouped ourselves and um, we started a new life in Rukora, what we call um, the Mienje area in the sub-county of Komero. And uh, so from there, we separated into several units. There was a unit of Nkrumah which was formed under my command. Then there was another unit, Kabarega, which was under Ustanwe Mahanji. Then there was Mount Lane unit. Then there was Abu Nasa. And uh, that was the main group that Nkuruma stayed in a single area to act as a rear and training wing. Then Mondrani went to current uh, Semoto area. Um, Kawarega went to Kapeka area. Where the Kapeka, you know Kapeka where it is. That was Kawarega unit. Then Mondrani in Semoto area. Then uh, Abdunasa with in the Matuga here. This was supposed to attack and close Kampara uh, Bombo Road. While we were moving in those areas, which I've told you briefly, from Bukomero, from Wamata to Kawarega, Kapeka now, to Mondran Semuto, to Matuga, Abunasa, we had civilian contacts. But also we had civilians who were organizing with our president in Kampala. And those civilians are the ones who formed themselves into NRC. Okay, the, it, was, it was the political arm of the struggle, which was formed under our current vice chairman, Arachi Gongo, and other civilians. So that became the political wing to mobilize for our internal and external support. And it was a very, very important uh, body. And uh, while the military wing was fighting the enemy, the political wing was mobilizing food and new locations. Because if the enemy attacked us, this village would guide us. There is a better forest where there is food, where we can get recruits. So that's how the two groups were formed. The military wing, at that time it was called PRA, which later became NRA, which later became UPDF. And then the political wing became NRC, which is now NRM. The NRA, was born out of PRA, People's Resistance, 
army. Okay? But when PRA joined with the, the group of late useful Ray, then we formed NRA, National Resistance Army and National Resistance Movement. But all this time, the fighting, when you go to the bush and you mobilize the people to fight, it becomes a people's war. But when you go walk to work, insurrection, uprising, it becomes insurrection. Okay? When you take over the barracks and take over Kampala using military, it becomes a coup d'etat. So there are three types of warfare. But our type is called the People's War because we were few armed who took up arms and went to the bush, joined the population who gave us forest to hide in, who gave us food, who gave, who gave us recruits. So it became a People's War. And they organized themselves to do the political mobilization where we did the military mobilization. So it's a people's war because we came out of the population. We came out of the people. We came out of the people's support, people's guidance. They gave us food. They gave us clothes. They gave us medicine. They gave us money. And up to now, we have built a very, very strong a relationship with the population and we know that without the population without the support of the population you cannot survive we the army we are like fish and the people are like water so if there is no water the fish definitely cannot survive the strength to win came out of a very clear political ideology a pro people ideology that produced a pro-people army with a clear military line, with a clear political line, under the able leadership of our current president, who is politically clear, who is, uh, who is visionary, and who is very, very consistent, and who is very, who concentrates, and who has passion to see Africa being liberated. So he concentrates on nothing else but the transformation of Uganda and Africa. And he's very, very passionate and very consistent. That's why he has managed to uh, galvanize people around him because of his vision, which is very, very clear. And he has that passion and that level of concentration that has helped us to be shaped, to be disciplined, to be focused, to be visionary, and to concentrate on what we do. That's why we have been able to be very different from other armies in Africa. Therefore, this discipline, this ideology, this clear military line, under the able guidance and leadership of our president, helped us to go through the struggle to go through the bush life and uh, the love and support of the Ugandans really helped us to succeed and we always recall and we we'll never forget the love and support of the population that's why we respect them and that's why we love them that time we had about over say 10,000 enemy forces who were surrendering to us. So by that time when we were about to capture Kampala, I was actually put in charge of reorganizing all those surrendering forces. And uh, I rebuilt them in PG. So for me, actually I stopped in PG. I never participated in capturing Kampala. I was in PG receiving all those surrendering forces from UNLA, from FUNA, Rescue Front, UFM, all those groups we had about over 10,000 units, troops we were surrendering to us and uh, it was a big task to retrain them, reorganize them, 
turn them into proper human beings. Otherwise, we are regarding them as animals because they were used to killing, raping, robbing. This the picture these people had created around themselves. But it took a long time to reorganize them, reintegrate them into the army and even, even civilians, civilian life. Because in the, they were being rejected. They were looked at as animals. But to regroup them and train them and turn them into proper human beings to be accepted in the society, it was a process. It wasn't a simple thing. But immediately, then um, I joined my groups in uh, Rubiri after the fall of Kampala and we formed the government and uh, we started running the government and uh, I'm grateful to the able leadership as I said and uh, guidance and uh, the level of our leader our leader's concentration and passion has helped him to hold this country together for these years and uh, we have transformed this country despite civil challenges, despite civil wars that the groups that had has uh, actually tried to raise against the NRA. Because for the last maybe 20 years, NRA, NRA has been fighting um, several rebellions. Even when that was going on, transformation was going on. And uh, <clears throat> I think we must give credit where it is due. Uh, after the fall of Kampala, I was in charge of reorganization. Reorganization was to reorganize these groups which were fighting NRA, including UNLA. We regrouped them, reorganized them, retrained them, and re redeployed them in the army. Those who could not be deployed in the army were reintegrated in the civilian life. That was a very big achievement. Then, after that, I was appointed uh, as a general manager of rural industries to build the defense industry, which is uh, a very big achievement. Because for any country to survive, you must be able to produce your own weapons, you must be able to produce your own medicine, you must be able to produce your own money, but at least we have not reached there. But at least we can now make our own weapons. So I was put in, in charge of that uh, unit, which is now based in uh, Nakasongola. And uh, from there, I became the managing director of NEC. NEC is still up and running, doing a lot of work for the army, uh, supplies, food, what, you know, construction, to so doing a great job. They're a big achievement also that I've, uh, I'm proud of, that the rural industry is there, NEC is there, fulfilling the constitutional obligation of a productive army. Because in our constitution we said we shall build a productive army and that is being fulfilled by NEC, which is in charge of Ruero, NEC construction and many other groups. So that one we have succeeded and I'm very proud of that one. So where I was uh, in NEC, then I retired from NEC, retired from the army in 2007. And uh, I joined active politics in 2010, 2011. I became member of parliament for Jabshuzi. And uh, I'm proud that uh, I have been able to deliver for the people of Jabshuzi, have ably represented them, have ably uh, lobbied for very many development projects. Electricity was not there, now we have electricity. Uh, water from national water from Likachera is there. We have got good schools. Nyabushoz actually was backward in, 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 or, or, to say the truth. But now we have schools, we have hospitals, we have dispensaries, we've got good roads. And I'm very proud that what Nyabushoz was in 1986, what Nyabushoz was in 2010, is very different from what it is today. Now Nyabushoz is a developed place like other parts of Uganda, and I'm very, very proud that I've represented Nyabushoz for 10 years, and I'm not going back this time, uh, let other people take over, but at least I'm very proud that I have been able to mobilize our people to join um, poverty education programs, which are initiated by the president, and I take them up, mobilize the people to join them, take them up, 
roads. So at least majority of our, our homes in Nyabushozi have some um, income generating activities. They are not uh, they have some activity. Those who are cultivating, they have matoke, cassava. Those who are cattle keeping, they have at least cows. Others are involved in pigare, others are involved in the uh, poultry. So there is there are many groups that actually involved in uh, income generating activities and that was my role to mobilize people and educate them and impart skills, uh, lobby things from the central government and make sure that at least in Yabushu or so uh, shares from the national budget. My advice to the youth, please don't be misled. This country, this leadership has helped you to grow from your mother's wombs up to where you are. We have given you education. We have given you life. We have given you infrastructure. Don't be misled by these enemies of this country. And uh, I don't believe that all the youth are in that category. Don't be misled by these uh, destructive social media by these destructive films, bad films, which you see on this TV because of democracy, because of freedom of communication. Don't be misled by those things. And please desist from these enemies of Uganda who are agents of evil, actually. I don't even call them foreign, foreign interests. No, they are agents of evil. Because peace-loving Europeans and uh, development partners don't, they actually want Uganda stable. They want a stable Uganda. So those evils within those societies are the ones who want to destabilize our country and I want to assure you that we shall not accept it. We shall not, we shall resist any form of because we have mobilized so many groups of the youth and we shall resist those groups of uh, those agents of evil I'm very sure peace-loving youth, uh, clear-headed youth who have been politically educated, who have been ideologically oriented, are not going to accept any misleading elements from outside to destabilize this beautiful Uganda. I want to remind Ugandans that this pandemic, this disease called COVID-19 is actively around and it has no choice yet. And I advise you to follow the guidance of government, the guidance of the president, the guidance of the Minister of Health, to always wear your masks, always sanitize or wash your hands, avoid crowds, avoid practice social distancing, avoid going to big weddings, Avoid going to barrios, avoid going to, you know, these huge organizations. Unless it is absolutely necessary, avoid those gatherings as much as possible because this disease has no cure. We want you alive. We don't want you dead. Finally, I want to thank all Ugandans for having voted President Museveni because they have voted for a secure future. They have voted for stability. They have voted for peace. They have voted for transformation. They have looked for. They have voted for development. And I want to thank all of you and encourage those people that did not vote for Museveni. Let us be sincere to ourselves. Let us give credit where it is due, and let us criticize constructively to construct our country, not to destroy our country. Because this country belongs to all of us. Those people in opposition, sell your programs to Ugandans. If they find that your programs is now attractive, more attractive than the NRM program, fine, they will join you. But you don't have to force yourselves. You don't have to cause disharmony to these innocent, peace-loving Ugandans. Thank you very much. God bless you.